This is the Big Bang within you. This is a picture of a simple quark and an anti-quark. And they make up what is called a meson, a fundamental particle. And when you try to pull them apart, what happens is that energy seems to rush in, which keeps them glued together. Here is a proton made up of three quarks. Now when you try to pull those apart, energy seems to rush in, which fuses them back together. So we can't get separate quarks from each other. We can't separate them out. This is the gluon field. Not only that, but each of those quarks is very light in weight. They're very, very light in weight. But the gluon field gives it mass. In other words, material is forming and unforming constantly going on inside of you. You are a hotbed of matter forming and disappearing. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story here. There's, re there's a search going on to find out what is the fundamental particle. But I want to show you in this little story how a quark, how it can suddenly get, get heavier, how it can gain mass. So what I want you to think of now is that the field is called the gluon field, is a room filled with scientists. And what are the scientists doing? They're all talking to each other. Yakety 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 yakety. All random. You know, what did you what did you do to bother you? Did it bother you? Did it bother you? Like that. Okay. And then what happens is that this guy makes an announcement. He says. Einstein is coming into the room. Einstein is coming into the room! And when he comes into the room, all of the other scientists go, Oh! We better, Oh! So what happened? They get him around him, and, they, and he can hardly move because he can make it go around him by the way. Einstein has now gotten massive. He's gotten all the mass of the gluons attaching himself to him. He himself wasn't that massive to begin with, but now he weighs about 10 tons because all these other guys are around him. And he can hardly move at all. That's how... Energy becomes matter through an influx of something we're just, just, just beginning to see how it works called information. Einstein. <laughs> now, something else happens. Einstein's gone. They're back to their cocktails and blabbing. And suddenly, somebody sticks their head in the room and says, Isaac Newton is coming. Newton, he, was, he thought he was dead. He's really coming? Isaac Newton is coming. He's going to be born. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh! Just the rumor, the information, and look what happened. There is no Newton. But that little gathering has suddenly made mass. And that gathering of gluons, that gathering, which is only gathered because somebody said something, some information was given to the field, makes matter come into existence as something matter, something material. Now, what has this got to do with anything? Everything. I mean, everything. All the matter in the world is made from information. Now, you may wonder, what the heck is that all about? What does that mean? Everything is made of information. I'm made of information. What does that mean? 
Well, we need to find out. You are essentially, first of all, what is information? Information is stuff of the mind. It's mind stuff. I don't know what that means, but it, to call it mind stuff. It's a mixed metaphor. It's a mixed bag. I don't know what a mind stuff looks like. I know what stuff stuff looks like. I know what it means when I'm stuffed. Oh, boy, my stuff. I know what that means. But mind stuff? Can I just, can I stuff my head with stuff like I stuff my belly with stuff? No, no. But it's mind stuff. It's something we, we call it something. But we don't really know what it is. Mind stuff. You're made of that stuff even though we don't know what it is. If I mind stuff, if I made mind stuff, if I am that stuff, that where in all heavens am I to be found? Am I to be found in my, in my, in my atoms, in my body, in my brain? Where, where, where am I? Well, the answer seems to be none of the above. And that's really going to cause some eyebrows rating. What do you mean, none of the above? You're in something we give a name to. I don't know how to call it. I call it the unrealm. The non-realm. The realm of no existence. You live there. I live there. We all live in that realm. All of this, which seems very solid and very real, and my God, turns out that when you look at it from this level, it's not so real as it appears. And as strange as that thought may occur, if we begin to entertain that idea that we are not so real as we appear, we move to a place of power that we've never felt before. To become less powerful is simply to stay within the realm of the material world. You may get to move a couple things around, but you're losing power. When you go to this more abstract unrealm, this is where your true power lies, because this is where you come from. This is who you are. But we have to discover that. We just don't, don't listen to me and tell you that. You've got to discover that for yourself. You've got to find that out. Otherwise, it's just talk. And talk is cheap. It's walking the talk. Walking your talking. That's difficult to do.